Hello everybody, dear colleagues, Department of Endocrinology, Tbilisi State Medical University presents a lecture, Diabetes mellitus as a global problem, pathogenesis, classification and diagnosis. Lecture is given by the head of the Endocrinology Department of Tbilisi State Medical University, Professor David Metravelli. What is diabetes mellitus? Diabetes mellitus comprises a group of common metabolic disorders that are share the phenotype of hyperglycemia. But there are also another definitions of diabetes. For example, diabetes is a syndrome of chronic hyperglycemia due to absolute deficiency of insulin or due to low sensitivity to insulin, high resistance to insulin, or due to combination of both causes. Or another definition, diabetes mellitus is a metabolic disorder characterized by the presence of chronic hyperglycemia accompanied by the greater or lesser impairment in the metabolism of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. The origin and etiology of diabetes mellitus can vary greatly but always include defects in either insulin secretion or response or in both at some point in the course of disease. Diabetes mellitus is the global problem. Objective information on diabetes as a global problem can be obtained from the biannual publications of the International Diabetes Federation, IDF, as a diabetes atlas. Here we can see all editions of the atlas, which first time was issued in uh, 2000, then in 2003, 2006, 2008, 9, and then 11, 13, 15, 17, and last edition in 2019. In uh, Diabetes Atlas, we have very important information. For example, it became clear that one in 11 adults from 20 to 79 years has diabetes It all for 163 million people. That in one from two adults with diabetes are undiagnosed. So uh, from two person with diabetes, one is undiagnosed and it accounts to 132 million people. That over three in four people with diabetes live in low or middle income countries. That 10% of global health expenditure is spent on diabetes. It's a very high 760 billion US dollars. That one in 13 adults among 20 to 79 years has impaired glucose tolerance. It's about 374 million people. In one in five people with diabetes is above 65 years old. It's a 136 million people. That more than 1 million children and adolescents below 20 years have type 1 diabetes. One in six live births, it's around 20 million, is affected by hyperglycemia in pregnancy. 84% of which is due to gestational diabetes. 
what was changed in diabetes world after 2017 till 2019. The epidemiology of diabetes has worsened significantly since previous publication i.e. of IDF Atlas in 2017. For example, 38 million more adults with diabetes than in 2017. 22 million more adults are at risk of developing diabetes than in 2017. And 20 million more adults with diabetes are undiagnosed than in 2017. 13 million more adults about 65 years old with diabetes than in 2017. Almost two thirds, it's about 63%, of people with diabetes are of working age under 60 years. And uh, 3,600 more children and adolescents have type 1 diabetes than in 2017. And uh, in United States dollars, 33 billion more is spent on diabetes than in 2017. The IDF experts' predictions based on evidence are not encouraging and suggest a significant increase in prevalence of diabetes by 2045 around the world. Here we can see the data of number of people among 20 to 70 years with diabetes globally and by the idea of regions. For example, in North America and the Caribbean region, uh, it predicts to increase of uh, amount of persons with diabetes by this 33 uh, percent from 2019 up to uh, 2045. And the, in the same period, uh, in South and Central America, the amount of people will increase by the 55 percent. In Africa, uh, the period up to 2045, the amount of people with diabetes will increase up to 143 percent. In Middle East and North Africa, it will increase in 96%. In Europe, by the 15%. Southeast Asia, 74% increase. And Western Pacific region, 31% will increase. Here we can see in this picture number of people with diabetes among 20 to 70 years old living in urban and rural areas in 2019. And we can see that it's, it's predicted that up to 2045, the prevalence of diabetes in age group of 20 to 79 years will increase more dramatically in urban uh, areas than in rurals. In this picture, we can see health expenditure and total diabetes-related health expenditure for adults from 20 to 79 years uh, with diabetes, from 2006 to 2019. And on this picture, it's a top 10 country data with diabetes, 20 from 79 years old persons, and their health expenditure in 2019. And, um, for example, in uh, United States of America, the, uh, this expenditure is enough high, but not in another country, for, for example, uh, in India, where the amount of people with uh, diabetes is very high, but uh, expenditure is very low. So there are dramatic differences among countries in their health expenditure or diabetes on each patient in age groups 20 to 79 years old. Head mortality. 
Here we can see in this picture a number of deaths by age and sex among 20 to 79 years in 2019. And there are different groups and uh, differentially uh, data for women and men. And we can see that uh, from the age group from 30 to 59, the uh, death rate is uh, somewhat higher in men, but in the next uh, age group from 60 to 79, the death rate is higher among women, patients with diabetes. And the picture shows the total diabetes related and mean health expenditure per person and per income growth 2019. So there are three groups high income countries, middle income countries, and low income countries. And there, is, there are dramatic differences among countries with different incomes, high, middle, or low. In total diabetes related health expenditure in billion United States dollar and mean diabetes related health expenditure per person in uh, the United States dollars. Presentations of diabetes. Patients with diabetes may present with fatigue, polyuria, polydipsia, and docturia, present with loss less frequently in type 2 than in type 1 diabetes. Diabetic ketoacidosis or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. Also, patients may have microvascular complications, retinopathy, nephropathy, neuropathy, or macrovascular complications, ischemic heart disease, stroke, peripheral vascular disease. Also, recurrent infections, because in diabetes there is a very a low resistance to infections. And many patients with type 2 diabetes are asymptomatic at presentation and are uh, identified by screening. Somewhat ahead of the events, I want to note that of all cases of diabetes mellitus, the main two types of diabetes prevail. So the world, well, it's a type diabetes type 1 and diabetes type 2. Type 2 diabetes account for over 80% of cases of diabetes in Europe and North America. Type 1 diabetes is responsible for another 5 to 10 percent, with the remainder being due to other causes. The prevalence of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes is increasingly worldwide. Diabetes type 2, 1. Diabetes type 1. Data of uh, International Diabetes um, uh, Federation. Age, sex standard, standardized in incidence rate per 100,000 um, uh, population per annum of type 1 diabetes in children and adolescents aged from 0 to 14 years, 2019. Here we can see the data um, per 100,000 uh, people this, in these regions. Uh, there are in Scandinavian and some Arabian countries, there are very high age sex standardized incidence rate per 100,000 population per annum of type 1 diabetes in children and adolescents aged from, one, from 0 to 14 years by data 2019. It's a more than 30 per 100,000. And data from uh, United States, uh, Canada, uh, Australia and some um, uh, North Africa and uh, any countries, European countries. Here we can see that this indicator is also high in these countries. It's about uh, among 20 to uh, 29 to less than 30 
per 100,000 inhabitants. Pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes mellitus is caused by disruption of the pancreatic insulin-producing beta cells, resulting in absolute insulin deficiency. The beta cell disruption is caused by an autoimmune process in 90% of patients with type 1 diabetes. This process progresses over a later period, many months or years, during which the individual is asymptomatic and euglycemic. This reflects the large number of functioning beta cells that must be lost before hyperglycemia occurs. A number of pancreatic beta cells autoantigens may play a role in the initiation or progression of autoimmune islet injury. This includes glutamic acid decarboxylase, GAD, or insulin and insulinoma-associated protein. The calcium effluent transporter has recently been recognized as another candidate type 1 diabetes autoantigen. However, it is not clear which of these autoantigens uh, is involved in the initiation of the injury and which is released only after the injury. Type 1 diabetes is likely to occur in genetically susceptible subjects and is probably triggered by environmental agents. Polymorphisms of a number of genes may influence the risk of type 1 diabetes. This includes the gene encoding preproinsulin and a number of genes related to immune system uh, function, such as those for a, uh, HLA DQ alpha, HLA DQ beta, and HLA DR, encoding class 2 major histocompatibility complex molecules which presents antigens to T lymphocytes. PTPN22 lymphoid protein tyrosine phosphatase uh, suppression of T cell activation and cytotoxic T lymphocyte antigen CTLA4. Several environmental factors have been suggested to trigger the autoimmune process in type 1 diabetes. However, none has been conclusively linked to diabetes. Factors include pregnancy-related and perinatal influences, virus, for example, Coxsackie, rubella, and dietary factors, for example, bovine milk proteins, cereals, and omega-3 fatty acids. Schematically, we can represent the pathogenesis of type uh, 1 diabetes as follows. There is, uh, the process may last, uh, last uh, during a long time, but initially in type 1 diabetes, the, the time from uh, beginning of process to manifestation is not so long as in type 2 diabetes. So it, it's an uh, uh, amount of uh, beta, cell, beta cell mass and uh, some genetic factors, then any trigger factors, stimulate the immunological abnormalities and uh, the uh, beta cell uh, amount is decreased uh, progressively and it's a period of pre-diabetes when in, uh, there is no uh, clinical evidence, clinical manifestations of um, overt form of diabetes and overt form of hyperglycemia. And, but when the uh, total amount of beta cells decreased dramatically, decreased enough, became enough low, the first manifestations of hyperglycemia indicate that starts the phase of clinical diabetes. But 
in any cases of type 1 diabetes initially may be so-called honeymoon period when the uh, glycemia became uh, near normal or normal and in any cases it became possible to stop the insulin therapy which was started in uh, initial phase of clinical diabetes. But very soon after some uh, days, some more weeks or some months, very rare, uh, a longer time, after a longer time, the uh, honeymoon period stopped and started the chronic phase of uh, type 1 diabetes with lifelong treatment of uh, insulin drugs. Diabetes type 2. Type 2 diabetes is characterized by the increased peripheral resistance to insulin action and impaired insulin secretion and decreased hepatic glucose output. Both genetic and environmental factors contribute to the development of insulin resistance and relative insulin deficiency in type 2 diabetes. Here we can see the data or reference range of insulin levels in the blood in the fasting condition after glucose administration, after 30 minutes, after one hour, after two hours, after three hours. So the data is changed and depends the level of insulin in the blood, depends on the level of glycemia. How can we calculate the insulin uh, index of insulin resistance? It's very easy uh, to make with help of um, uh, online calculators, so-called HOMA2 calculator. We should know plasma glucose concentration in millimol per liter or in milligram per deciliter, and also insulin concentration in the blood um, in picomol per liter or microunit per milliliter. Also, it may be done with help of uh, C-peptide uh, concentration in the blood. And this calculator may give uh, information about uh, insulin resistance, about uh, beta cell function, and uh, sensitivity to insulin. For example, here in picture we see that the person who had uh, plasma glucose level 5.1 millimol per liter and in the same uh, blood the insulin concentration was 200 picomol per liter it means that the, uh, there is a lot of insulin uh, for uh, uh, keeping the plasma glucose level in normal range 5.1 millimol per liter it means that person had high resistance to insulin and low sensitivity. So in this case, calculator shows that insulin resistance is 3.61, so it's, it's twice higher than normal, and um, sensitivity is very low, 27.7. And uh, the beta cell uh, secretory activity is very high. So it means that the patients uh, nowadays have normal glycemia, but uh, it's um, uh, hyperinsulinemia is necessary to keep blood glucose level in normal range. The genetic influence on the development of type 2 diabetes is supported by the following observations. Monozygotic twins have 90% concordance rate. 40% of patients with type 2 diabetes have at last one parent with type 2 diabetes. The lifetime risk for a first degree relative of patients with type 2 diabetes is 5 to 10 times higher than for those without a family history of diabetes. Monogenic diabetes. Monogenic causes of type uh, to diabetes represents a very small fraction of cases 
It is likely that multiple genetic accumulation anomalies at different loci covers varying degree of predisposition to type 2 diabetes. Several uh, inherited polymorphisms have been identified with individually contribute only small degrees of risk for diabetes. Obesity causes peripheral resistance to insulin-mediated glucose uptake and may also decrease the sensitivity of the beta cells to glucose. Upper body or male type obesity has a much greater association with insulin resistance than lower body or female type obesity. The mechanism by which obesity induced insulin resistance is poorly understood. The C John amino terminal kinase pathway may be an important mediator of the relationship between obesity and insulin resistance. AJNK activity is increased in obesity and can interfere with the insulin action. Plasma free fatty acids concentration are high in obese patients and high Plasma-free fatty acid concentration can impair insulin-stimulated glucose uptake in skeletal muscle. Insulin resistance may, at last in part, be related by adipokines, including leptin, adiponectin, tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF-alpha, and uh, resistin, secreted by adipocytes. Leptin deficiency and leptin resistance are associated with obesity and insulin resistance. Adiponectin deficiency may contribute to the development of insulin resistance and subsequent type 2 diabetes. Increased release of TNF-alpha from adipocytes may also play a role in the impairment of insulin action. Polymorphism is the gene for peroxisome proliferator activated receptor PPR gamma 2, a transcription factor that has a key role in adipocyte differentiation, may contribute to the variability in insulin sensitivity in the general population. The reasons for the decline in insulin secretory capacity in type 2 diabetes are not clear. Chronic hyperglycemia can have a toxic effect on beta cells, so-called glucotoxicity. And elevation of free fatty acid levels may also worsen pancreatic beta cell function. It's so-called lipotoxicity. Animal models have suggested that GLUT2, a beta cell glucose transporter, and ABCA1, ATP binding cassette transporter, a cellular cholesterol transporter, may play a role in impaired insulin secretion and the development of type 2 diabetes. There is evidence that processing of proinsulin to insulin in the beta cells may be impaired in type 2 diabetes. Islet amyloid polypeptide Emiline is stored in insulin secretory granules in the pancreatic beta cells. Many patients with type 2 diabetes have increased amounts of emiline in their pancreas. However, it is not clear whether this has a causative role or is a consequence of the defect of insulin secretion. Single nucleotide polymorphism in the gene for TCF7L2 significantly increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. This variant genotype, genotype is associated with decreased insulin secretion from beta cells in response to glucose. Diabetes type 2 and particularly the knowledge of the role of incretins, GLP-1 or GIP, and other factors, DPP-4, 
uh, AGLT2. Uh, in pathogenesis of hyperglycemia in diabetes type 2 is extremely important. It helps us to better understand possible ways of successful management of hyperglycemia in diabetes type 2. Ongoing research suggests that careful attention to all of the mechanisms involved in glucose homeostasis may lead to new insights and novel interventions in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Blood glucose levels are affected by a number of key organs that regulate the entry and removal of glucose from the blood. The intestine, liver, pancreas, skeletal muscle, brain, adipose tissue, and the kidneys. After a meal, the intestine absorbs glucose via the sodium glucose transporter 1, known as SGLT1, and delivers it to the blood. In response to glucose absorption, the intestine secretes two major incretin hormones, glucagon-like peptide GLP-1 and glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide GIP, which together with increased levels of glucose augment the secretion of insulin from the beta cells of the pancreas. GLP-1 also suppresses the secretion of glucagon from the alpha cells of the pancreas. The glucoregulatory effects of incretins are limited by the activity of the dipeptidyl peptidase 4 DPP4 enzyme, which rapidly degrades the GIP and GLP-1 incretin hormones. In skeletal muscle and adipose tissue, insulin stimulates glucose uptake into the cells. In the fasting state, the liver helps maintain normal blood glucose levels by hepatic gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, which result in the release of glucose into the blood. Insulin also suppresses hepatic gluconeogenesis while increasing peripheral glucose uptake, which prevents an abnormal rise in postprandial blood glucose levels. Renal glucose reabsorption, mediated by the sodium glucose transporter 2, or SGLT2, is the primary mechanism by which filtered glucose is actively returned to the blood and retained in the body. SGLT2 actively reabsorbs about 90% of all filtered glucose in the S1 segment of the proximal tubule. SGLT2 is believed to be expressed almost exclusively in the kidneys. SGLT1 reabsorbs the remaining filtered glucose. Dysregulation of glucose balance resulting in hyperglycemia is a hallmark of diabetes. Increased visceral adiposity in particular has been shown to contribute to the development of insulin resistance in the liver, skeletal muscle, and adipose tissue. Insulin resistance in these tissues results in a compensatory increase in the amount of insulin secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas. Over time, the beta cells may fail to produce enough insulin to meet the demand created by insulin resistance. This failure may also be worsened by glucotoxicity, the deleterious effect of elevated glucose on beta cell function and its contribution to insulin resistance. Inability of the pancreas to secrete adequate amounts of insulin results in hyperglycemia which contributes to the impairment and eventual failure of the endocrine system's ability to lower blood glucose. In type 2 diabetes, the normal incretin response is lost or substantially impaired. However, the DPP-4 enzyme performs its usual function despite fewer incretins to degrade. All of these hormonal effects lead to reduced insulin secretion, reduced glucose uptake, increased glucagon secretion, and excessive hepatic glucose production. In the diabetic state, the kidneys continue to reabsorb virtually all filtered glucose despite the presence of hyperglycemia. Complete reabsorption of filtered glucose persists until plasma glucose concentrations exceed 200 mg per deciliter, at which point the glucose load in the filtrate overwhelms the capacity of the transporters the maximum transfer rates attainable by SGLT2 and SGLT1, thus allowing glucose to be cleared in the urine. In type 2 diabetes, hyperglycemia is the net result of pancreatic hormone imbalance, absorption of dietary glucose from the intestine, 
overproduction of glucose by the liver, diminished incretin effects, reduced uptake of glucose by peripheral tissues, and reabsorption of glucose by the kidney. Over time, these factors contribute to the sustained hyperglycemia that leads to glucotoxicity, which worsens insulin resistance and contributes to beta cell dysfunction. In this way, hyperglycemia appears to perpetuate a vicious cycle of deleterious effects that exacerbate type 2 diabetes. We can represent the pathogenesis of diabetes type 2 as follows. So, the insulin sensitivity is decreased mm, uh, slowly uh, and uh, the uh, beta cell mm, loss increased. Hyperinsulinemia became necessary to keep blood glucose level in normal range in case of um, uh, increasingly insulin resistance and um, uh, during the time the endogenous insulin production decreased requ insulin requirements increased with age and at last developed secondary um, failure of uh, beta cells and uh, developed hyperglycemia what about classification of diabetes? It's a type 1 diabetes, the immune mediated and idiopathic diabetes. In the case of idiopathic diabetes, when a person has destruction of beta cells, absolute deficiency of insulin, but in all mm, modern possibility of diagnosis uh, don't give information why there is absolute insulin deficiency developed and why there are uh, destruction with the destruction of beta cells so it's so-called idiopathic mm, uh, form of uh, type 1 diabetes is very small amount of diabetes and type 2 diabetes as I tell you, about 80% of all cases, the, the old cases of diabetes is type 2 diabetes. Very interesting is the information about genetic defects of beta cell function when, and uh, so-called uh, monogenic diabetes. It's a maturity onset diabetes in use. Now, there are two different types of this um, uh, diabetes. Diabetes may develop because of uh, genetic defects in insulin action resulting in insulin resistance. Diabetes may mm, develop because of any pancreatic disease. It may be chronic pancreatitis, cystic cystic fibrosis, hereditary hemohormatosis, pancreatic cancer, fibrocalculose pancreatopathy, and uh, after surgical removal of the pancreas also may develop diabetes. Different endocrinopathies, when there is excess secretion of hormones that are antagonized to the metabolic effect of insulin, may result uh, the risk of diabetes increased in such cases. For example, it's a Cushing syndrome, uh, when it's uh, excess cortisol or maybe exogen, when it's excess growth hormone, hemochromocytoma, excess catecholamines, glucagonoma, glucogenoma, glucogenoma, excess glucagon, somatostatinoma, excess somatostatin. Any drug may induce diabetes. For example, glucocorticoids, atypical antipsychotic agents, protease inhibitors, beta blockers, TSI, di diuretics, uh, and so on. Any infection may result damage of beta cells, so congenital rubella, coxsackie virus, cytomegalovirus. And very important is gestational diabetes. And at last, uncommon forms of immune mediated diabetes, diabetes in case of um, 
for example, Steve Mann syndrome. Genetic syndromes which are associated with diabetes. It's a Down syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome, Turner syndrome, Wolfram syndrome, prader weary syndrome, and so on. So mm -hmm. very special is the problem about mm, the diabetes um, in pregnancy, gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is a diabetes which develops first time and, uh, during pregnancy and uh, which was uh, first time uh, diagnosed during pregnancy. Gestational diabetes is very important because mm, I result of the problems uh, damage of fetal development and also uh, uh, complications of pregnancy. And uh, there are um, risk factors for gestational diabetes, such as obesity, family history of diabetes, and um, fetus macrosomia during previous pregnancy, or um, the gestational diabetes, which was diagnosed uh, during previous pregnancy and then disappeared um, because after um, gestational diabetes because of gestational diabetes uh, after delivery disappeared usually about in 98 um, percent uh, so uh, it's very important to know how to um, screen uh, gestational diabetes and uh, how to manage gestational diabetes Diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. If a person is diagnosed with diabetes mellitus if she or he has one or more of the following criteria. It's a symptoms of diabetes and a random plasma glucose equal or more than 11.1 millimole per liter. First thing, plasma glucose equals 7 millimole per liter or more after an overnight fast of at last eight hours. Two hour plasma glucose levels equal or more than 11.1 millimole per liter after a 75 glucose or a glucose tolerant test. In the absence of unequivocal hyperglycemia and acute metabolic decompensation, this criteria should be confirmed by a repeat testing on another day. And diagnosis of pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes can be diagnosed based upon a fasting blood glucose test or an oral glucose test. Impaired fasting glucose is defined as the fasting plasma glucose between 5.6 and 6.9 millimol per liter. An impaired glucose tolerance is defined as a plasma glucose level of 7.8 to 11.0 millimole per liter, measured two hours after the 75 gram oral glucose tolerant test. And individuals with impaired fasting glucose or impaired glucose tolerance are at considerable risk for developing type 2 diabetes. There is a 40% risk over the next five years. Impaired glucose tolerance is very common and affects about 11% of people between the age of 20 to 70 years. Distinguish <coughs> uh, type 1 and type 2 diabetes is very important. The need for insulin treatment does not distinguish between type 1 and type 2 diabetes and many patients with type 2 diabetes also require insulin for glucose control. Patients with type 1 diabetes are more likely to have the following features. Age of onset of diabetes less than 30 years. Body mass index less than 25 kg per square meter. Acute symptoms. A personal or family history of autoimmune disease. However, None of these criteria is absolute and specific for type 1 diabetes. 
or type 1 mediated destruction of the beta cells can occur at any age. It's estimated that 5 to 10 percent of those who develop diabetes after age 30 have type 1 diabetes, known as latent mm, autoimmune diabetes in adults, LADA diabetes. Furthermore, type 2 diabetes may occur in overweight children and adolescents. When it is difficult to distinguish between type 1 and type 2 diabetes, testing for islet cells antibodies and anti-GAD antibodies may be helpful in establishing the diagnosis of autoimmune type 1 diabetes. Genetic tests are excluded the diagnosis of more the maturity onset diabetes induced are also useful if the diagnosis is in doubt. If type 1 diabetes is suspected on clinical grounds, or if islet cells or GAT antibodies are positive, the patient should be presumed to have type 1 diabetes and treated with insulin replacement therapy. Insulin should also be started in any patient who is catabolic, for example, present with weight loss or dehydration in the setting of hyperglycemia, or who has increased ketogenesis, ketonuria, or ketoacidosis. LADA ladder is defined as the adult onset diabetes with circulating islet antibodies but not requiring insulin therapy initially. Patients with LADA have a high risk of progression to insulin dependency. So at last key points. Insulin is a peptide hormone synthesized and secreted by the beta cells in pancreatic islet in Langerhans. Insulin release is stimulated by a rise in plasma glucose. Insulin lowers postprandial blood glucose by an inhibition of glucogenogenesis in glucogenolysis, increases glucose uptake into adipocytes and skeletal muscle cells, and increases glycolysis. Patients with diabetes may present with fatigue, polyuria, polydipsia, weight loss, diabetic ketoacidosis, a hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, recurrent infections, and microvascular or macrovascular complications. Type 1 diabetes mellitus, mellitus results from destruction of the pancreatic insulin producing beta cells usually due to an autoimmune process. Type 2 diabetes results from peripheral insulin resistance and impairing insulin secretion. Type 2 diabetes accounts for over 80% of cases of diabetes in Europe and North America. Type 1 diabetes is responsible for another 5 to 10%, with the reminder being due to other causes such as genetic mutations affecting beta cell function, pancreatic disease, endocrinopathies, and drugs such as glucocorticoids. Diabetes mellitus can be diagnosed based on one or more of other following criteria. Symptoms of diabetes and a random plasma glucose equal or more 11.1 mmol per liter. Or fasting plasma glucose equal or more 7 mmol per liter after an overnight fast of total um, COVID last uh, eight hours. And a two hour plasma glucose equal 11.1 or more mmol per liter after a 75 gram or a glucose tolerance test. Thank you for attention.